Good morning, Big Square here, RoadToRuda.com. It's your morning Horn of Z's, and I have something very exciting to show you. Look at that, a Horn of Z's mug. <laughs> On the back it says, Road to Ruda. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I do have a, a, a special, one second here. Again, Horn of Z's means sip of coffee uh, in a language called Bootling, which is a Northern California original language in America. Um, really interesting. The, the the families, the adults in the families that were in the, uh, uh, I think it's in the farming industry, were out in the fields with their kids and wanted to create a language so they can gossip behind their kids' back. <laughs> so yeah, it was an original language invented in Northern California, up near Boonville, California. Um, but the exciting news is those cups, um, I have a very limited supply of them. And starting, I'm announcing this right now, if you are a Road to Ruta um, private road member or want to be a private road member, while supplies last, I'm going to send out a cup with the, um, along with the $30 in paper wallet Bitcoin um, for every subscriber or renewal that uh, signs up this week, this week only, um, in limited supply. So if you're interested in getting a cup and you want to renew your Road to Ruta subscription on the private road or join and, and find out about the amazing things that we're doing tomorrow, I'm going to release kind of a summary and synopsis of uh, my new book that I don't know when it will be released, but there's so much information there about the gold in the Grand Canyon, uh, the meaning of it, its ramifications, huge, gigantic gold mine, largest gold mine ever found in the history of humanity, was found right in the middle of the Grand Canyon in the early 1900s. It was announced on the front page of the New York Times, and then it went silent. Uh, nobody's allowed to go there. Right now, it's been guarded by the U.S. Marines, has been guarded for over 100 years now. I believe it's the reason for the creation of the Federal Reserve System. And uh, there's a lot of proof that I have. So uh, on Friday, tomorrow, I'm going to release a short summary to all the private road members. So if you want to join the private road, it's 299 bucks for a year. And you get access to over 3,000 articles and information in the Road to Ruta at the Road to Ruta website. Um, all this stuff I'm talking about on YouTube, I've been researching for... 17 years and it's all in the Road to Ruta archives. So uh, yeah, you can spend days, months, years sifting through that stuff, learning about the manipulation of gold and silver, the secret plans behind the scenes. Um, anyway, that's the promotion this week only though. Uh, so today or tomorrow, um, if you sign up at RoadToRuta.com in the private road, uh, you're going to get a mug sent to your front door with a little uh, Bitcoin, $30 worth of hard copy Bitcoin in your mug. <laughs> you can't beat it. Anyway, let's move on to the news today. I'm sure there's a lot of exciting things going on. Um, let me get this going here. And we have House Intel Committee Chairman Nunes recuses himself from the Russian probe. Another day, another dramatic turn in the ongoing Russia hacking story. When moments ago, the chair of the House Intel Committee, Devin Nunez, said he would recuse himself from the panel's probe into Russia meddling into the election. This whole Russia meddling thing, as you guys know, and probably anybody who, who has an open mind and can see facts and, and doesn't watch CNN where they refuse to report facts, um, knows that this whole Russian uh, mantra is a plan. It's a plan to help. Uh, there are connections between Russia and Trump. Those connections have to do with taking out the bad guys. And getting Trump elected was part of a much, much bigger um, operation to take down these bad guys around the world. And Putin was involved in that. So obviously the people behind Trump and the people working with Putin um, coordinated certain things. And the Democrats found that out because they spied on them. Uh, but it's so much bigger. I mean, the, the difference between colluding with the Russians to take out uh, the embedded deep state of the criminal side of the United States and around the world is much different uh, than you know, colluding for personal reasons to you know, win the election for Trump. 
Um, so, you know, does it matter that uh, Nunez is recusing himself? No, it's so much bigger than one single person. And the fact they did it means that they're getting farther and farther away. And it would be nice not to have him there when they say, hey, there's no proof of, of anything. Because if they if they brought out the proof and they, they said exactly what was said between um, Trump's people and the Russians, they would, these are the, you know, the people fighting to get this information out, don't want all of it out. They just want the information that the collusion was there. They don't want them to come out and say, oh, by the way, they were exchanging facts and information about the criminality of what was going on in Washington, D.C. So it's one of those things, you know, they, they, the, the Democrats and the bad guys on that side of the, uh, the deep state want uh, to use this as an angle to try to you know, get Trump out, but at the same time, they don't want to go too deep into it or they're going to find out all the secrets of what Obama and the people behind Obama and Bush and the people behind Bush were doing. <laughs> and that they don't want. So yeah, it's a, it's a delicate dance there. Ron Paul, zero chance Assad behind chemical weapons attacked in Syria, likely a false flag, pointing out that the prospect of peace in Syria was moving closer before the attack with ISIS and Al-Qaeda on the run. Paul says, <clears throat> quote, it looks like maybe somebody didn't like that, so there had to be an episode. Who benefits? It doesn't make any sense for Assad under the, these conditions to all of a sudden use poison gas. I think there's zero chance he would have done this deliberately. That's exactly true. I did watch CNN. I often watch CNN to see what the, the bad guys are promoting. Oh, my God. They were like, I can't. They, they pulled out these uh, Syrian babies you know, young kids saying, oh, I want my friends, I want a normal life. I mean, CNN is, is trying to get us into World War III. CNN and uh, everybody who's, who's jumping up and down, John McCain for, for war. It is so obvious and apparent on CNN when they were doing this. And, and I went to the CNN website and everything is about, I can't believe the United States isn't going to war. You know, a war in Syria will turn into World War Three, and we're not gonna. That's not gonna be allowed to happen behind the scenes. Um, this is all. It was a false flag, ninety nine percent chance. The the key now is Trump should go in there and, and put real investigations into. Okay, who who supplied these chemical weapons? And it all gets back to the deep state and the CIA. So, you know, we'll see where this one goes. Um, what Trump's border wall may look like. Look here. Here are the proposed designs. The border wall, I've said it a million times, Mexico's going to want to put up a border if they free the price of silver. <coughs> $1,000 silver and Mexico's the richest country in the world. $10,000 silver, Mexico's the richest country in the world. Everybody would flood back into Mexico and Mexico would want to put up the wall and they would pay for it. Absolutely. Um, because, you know, they don't want all the Americans rushing into Mexico. It's very clever how Trump did that, by the way. You know, but now obviously we're just waiting on Trump to release the price of silver and, and stop the market rigging and, and get Steve Mnuchin out of the U.S. Treasury Secretary. The unavoidable pension crisis. If you have a pension, a I know it's hard to to get a take a lump sum on a pension um, because a lot of people have that option because you're going to lose some you know, health care and things like that. But these pensions are so drastically underfunded it is it's an accident waiting to happen and when it does happen there will be chaos around the world um the problem with the pensions are twofold one there, there's not enough people coming into the pension program the benefits are are falling down by the wayside and and two the the uh, interest rates have killed all retirement accounts killed it absolutely zero percent interest on these you know the safe assets they're required to invest in um Again, if you have anything in the system that you can get out, you don't have to pay penalties and you don't have to pay interest, call my buddy Will Lair. And Will is with PerpetualAssets.com. I got his number right here. Write this down, 888-281-2630. And ask Will if uh, he can help you. And, and they can help set up a self-directed IRA where you can take all your money out of the p pension system, out of the... Uh, the four one Ks are tough, but IRAs you can do all these are, are normal rollovers except it's rolled over into a self directed IRA, an LLC in your own name, where you're in charge of your own money, and you can get physical silver eagles and take them in or Bitcoin, hard copy Bitcoin, put keep them on your possession. 
um, without paying taxes and penalties. But anyway, call Will, and if you haven't done it now, it's, it should be pretty obvious to you that the system of the retirement system, the backdrop for everybody is, is going by the wayside. And remember, you know, those of you with money in the banks and money in stocks and bonds and all that, the Dodd-Frank Act was very specific about what happened right at the end. They wrote in a clause that said for the FDIC, this is the, the entity that uh, insures your bank account, your savings account, your um, it doesn't insure stocks. That's, that's another entity that has no money either. <laughs> but it, written in the Dodd-Frank law is before the government bails out anybody, anybody, they have to bail out the derivatives first. And that was written in the Dodd-Frank law at the last second. And the reason it was put in there and allowed to go in there was to make sure that the next crash destroyed the system entirely. Because you are not going to have the American people allowing derivatives, banking derivatives, to be paid off in the trillions, in the hundreds of trillions. And, you know, before Ma and Pa Kettle uh, get their, their FDIC payout on their savings account and checking account. So... The system is designed to be destroyed totally at the next banking crash, and we're getting close. Uh, the stakes couldn't be higher. Trump and Xi, that's how you pronounce uh, the, the um, premier or president of, of China. Uh, his first name is Xi. Uh, last name is Jinping. Um, Xi Jinping. It took me a while to figure that out, <laughs> how to say it. X-I. What's his name? X-I? No, it's Xi. Um, to navigate minefield at first summit, the first summit, yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, China knows exactly what uh, the U.S. knows, and the Chinese want the system to go on as long as possible because they are soaking up all the benefits. We've allowed it to go on. We've allowed China to rise and help its people. We've allowed them to build these. They call them ghost cities in China. Huge, beautiful cities um, that there's nobody in, which can hold millions and millions of people per city, but there's nobody there. Um, it's all in preparation for this transition out of the old monetary system into the new one. Uh, we're about that, but that the point that China's ready and we're ready. I mean, everybody's ready for this uh, old system to be wiped away and a new one to get started. So, uh, should be interesting what what is talked about behind the scenes. I think behind the scenes, Trump and she will be working together to uh, time the the collapse. And there will be no more globalization after the collapse of the monetary system. So China won't be making our products. They'll make products for their own people. they got enough people. The demand is not the problem. It's those little fiat pieces of paper in, in the hands of everybody. Um, and China has huge plans for uh, Bitcoin. And I can see 1.4 billion people working off a Bitcoin system. Uh, it, it's literally leapfrogging China into a, uh, a new monetary system and... Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that all the Chinese rules and regulations around the exchanges and things like that is all geared toward making Bitcoin safer and more sane. Um, so it's great things I think are going to go on behind the scenes, uh, but most likely they'll come out and, and there will be tension um, because that's the idea is to cause tension and, and destroy the monetary system. Initial jobless claims suddenly crashed by most in two years, having slowly drifted to the highest levels before Christmas, initial jobless claims collapsed last week by 25,000 to 234,000, near 44-year lows. This is the biggest weekly drop since April 2015. These numbers are fake. These numbers are completely fake and phony. And, and Trump's doing the exact same thing that the people behind, before him did. And that is rig the numbers. Rig the numbers by just telling the world something and, and the world believes it. They, they lie about GDP. They lie about employment rates. And, you, and it's so distorted now that you can't go back to anything truthful. That's one of the things that's going to happen when the, the system falls apart. They're going to have to redo the system and redo all the numbers so that there's a more more honest way of accounting for you know, how many people are working and how many people are not working. Look at that. Horn of Z's. Get your Horn of Z's mug now. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, go to roadtoruda.com and there's a subscription tab on the left side if you're interested. All right. Uh, let's see. Sokjin, the upcoming central bank reversal can't be helpful for stocks. The wider Fed debate is about the impact on risk assets of shrinking the balance sheet. If near zero rates and central bank buying of bonds have been the fundamental driver of global capital towards higher yielding assets, then reversing both parts of this can't be helpful. 
which is how markets have reacted overnight. The system will fall apart when the when the little guy in charge of the computer in the basement of the U.S. Treasury clicks a mouse and everything falls apart. That's all. That's all that has to be done, and that's the power of computers. Greenspan loved to say that the the power of computers is awesome. Back it back in the day when you know before he he got in as uh, head of the Fed. He was, as I have pointed out many times, he was the world's greatest computer programmer. He invented the financial asset. He invented, it's, it's like Al Gore said, I invented the internet. Everybody laughed, which he didn't invent the internet. He was on some panel that gave some approval and said that I invented the internet. Alan Greenspan actually did invent the financial assets, wrote the very first computer programs for banking. He was the guy responsible for Y2K. He programmed only two digits instead of four. That is why he was put in charge of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1987. Ronald Reagan and the people behind Reagan put Alan Greenspan in charge because he had been in charge and under control, had the markets under control with his computer programs all the way since the 1960s. He was the guy in charge, him and this guy, Stephen Duveau. So yeah, it's uh, it's everything's done with the computer program. At the end of the day, they can just click a button and everything would be destroyed. Uh, almost happened in two thousand eight. The problem in two thousand eight, they could have destroyed it, but the people weren't ready. The people didn't know enough. That's why Congress freaked out and, and ultimately approved the bailout of what was seven hundred billion, and then the, the banks leveraged it to twenty trillion, and then the Federal Reserve opened their their discount window to the world. So yeah, it's going on, and you know the moment they decide to end it, it will end. So I can't tell you what day they're going to click that button, but uh, more and more, it's becoming more and more obvious that the the United States is losing the battle, the the battle to uh, you know be the the leader of the, the world going forward. So yeah, things are about to change. Uh, again, Syria denies, condemns use of chemical weapons. Yeah, I, I doubt Syria did it, and and it really. I doubt it was even done. You know, a lot of these false flags are just fake, phony, um, you know, photo ops for videographers. Videographers? Videographers. Uh, another central bank throws in the towel. Czech National Bank ends currency cap, floats corona. Two years after the Swiss National Bank similarly threw in the towel, moments ago, Czech National Bank ended its currency peg, regime limiting corona appreciation, a move that had been widely expected by many traders. Traders don't determine the value of currency versus the value of any other currency. Uh, currency trading, floated currency trading, was invented by Paul Volcker in the 1970s. He was the guy who, who oversaw it, and it was done with computers. That's the only reason and, and that's the only way currencies uh, were able to be uh, traded against each other without a backing, without a gold backing. Uh, Paul Volcker was the guy who organized it with Alan Greenspan doing the computer stuff. So it's still on the computers. <laughs> Nothing different. Nothing has changed. Global stocks rebound. Oh my God, we're back in the green. Yahoo. <laughs> and then the next, you know, you notice all these, all these reasons why markets crash or markets go up or markets go down or they're just, they're fluff and they're gone the next day. The reasons don't matter at all. Cut more. It's now a matter of when, not if markets break down. If they were freely traded, I say, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. They should have crashed decades ago, um, but they aren't freely traded, and they haven't been freely traded, and it's all run off a computer. So, it will end when the the U.S. Treasury decides it's going to end, and the U.S. Fed and they work together on this. Uh, <clears throat> Obamacare repeal and tax reform are dead. What does that do? It balloons the budget even higher, and it makes things worse. And the end of the federal government is coming. So I expect a lot more kind of uh, infighting within the government that's you, you can't have 35 million people working for the federal government in the United States working for directly or indirectly 35 million people it's insane um, so that's got to change it's got to be torn apart and ripped apart it'll be ripped apart when the entire implosion happens in the banking system Miami condo implosion is much worse than aggregate industry numbers revealed um, Cliff High is is all is moving to Florida at some point um, because he sees that we, we got a, a an ice age really forming in the in the northern part of the United States so he's going south um, will housing go up down or sideways 
It all depends on the banks. If the banks are lending, housing prices will continue to go up. And if the Fed is flooding the system with money, which they're doing, the housing prices will continue to go up. The moment the bank lending ends, housing prices will go to practically you know, 10% of what they are now because nobody can buy a house with cash. And when the banks go down, you can kiss that all goodbye. Um, would I buy a house? But you can kiss your, your mortgage payments goodbye as well in that situation. Um, and yes, there will be a debt jubilee when the, when the banks crash. There will be so much anger towards the banks and everybody will have their assets destroyed, the electronic assets. So yeah, they're not going to, you know, stay, oh, you got to pay the banks. They can go bankrupt, but you still have to pay them. Uh, there'll be a global demand for a debt jubilee and, and that'll be a great thing because our big problem in the world right now is debt. And when debt is all of debt is gone, you're kind of standing there with your house. You might not have legal title, but you probably don't have legal title to your house anyway because it's all put in the MERS system. Um, uh, the electronic, the mortgage electronic uh, reserve system or something, something to that effect. Uh, it's all digitally, you know, phonied up and the contracts are probably robo-signed, half of them anyway. Um, so yeah, when it comes to property ownership, who's got the gun at the end of the day to defend their property or what they claim as their property? Because the banks clearly did never deserve that property. They create money out of thin air due to the Federal Reserve Act. Um, and that's how they gained access to you know putting their name on the title of, of the property that you live in. Very interesting, but that's it'll get very complicated as, as to what like what about apartment buildings, who owns it, and you know are squatters going to be allowed? And there's a lot of problems when the banks collapse, and uh, hopefully there's a there's a plan in place. I, I think there was, and then it got scrapped, and there's another one that got scrapped. The Nestra plan, the National Economic Stability and Recovery Act. Everybody's looking forward to that and the, you know, the, the freedom funds and the Iraqi dinar, you name it, that there's a plan for it. I don't think any of it will work. I think it's got to be more organic. So we'll go down to what do people decide to use as money? I think people will use gold and people will use silver and people will use Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin might take them longer if it's not government sponsored. If it's government sponsored, it'll be overnight. So that'll be really interesting. Uh, Germany passes bill to find Facebook, Twitter up to $50 million for fake news. Fake news, fake news, fake news. The the governments are attacking uh, the social media and they are requiring the social media companies weed out the fake news. Their version, whose version of fake news are we talking about? We're talking about massive censorship and who's the decider of what's fake news and what's real news. Um, I can say that the P word and have this video banned on YouTube, you know, the P G A T E word <laughs> and they'll, they'll ban this video as fake news. So, Oh, but my video the other day, um, it was wishes and rainbows and all the happy things that I wasn't going to say, you know, I wasn't going to write down anything offensive. People reminded me, I didn't know that much about it, but YouTube has this voice recognition software that has massively banned that video already. So, uh, my little experiment didn't work. Uh, next time I'll try a different kind of experiment uh, where I don't even say anything bad against our government or, or any of the fake news memes. Um, but yeah, my, my bad for not knowing just how capable their uh, voice recognition software is. All right, uh, visualizing the buying power of the US dollar over the last century. That I, I'm not even gonna click on it, I can tell you. It, the dollar's lost all its value, 99% of its value over the last century. But that was all part of the plan. And it goes back to the gold that was found in the Grand Canyon. It's the only reason the United States was allowed to create the Federal Reserve Bank, to create this fake, phony money, was because they, you know, all these other countries, many of these other countries have seen that gold. Uh, China did a gold loan this would be in my book, a gold loan based off the Grand Canyon gold of $300 million in, in U.S. dollars back when, in 1934, when gold was the dollar. You know, the, it, it wasn't, it was the backing, the pseudo backing. Uh, there was a deal to bail out the United States or bail out China. I'm not sure who it was, but I do have the documents. Um, 
that show the Grand Canyon and, and the gold, a depiction of the gold. It's really interesting, and it's all done with code and all this stuff, but uh, it's part of the book, and you'll you'll be able to check that out. Tomorrow I'm going to post uh, the, the summary again in the Friday road trip. All right. Uh, with Trump as president, prepping is more important than ever. I, I would say with anybody as president, prepping is more important than than ever. We need to get you got to be ready to go out on your own. Even if you live in the big city, find a place to bug out to if you have to. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna stay and hunker down and make sure you got guns and food and water uh, to last. Year knows how long this transition is going to be hopefully it'll be very quick a matter of weeks um, because the united states has been planning on this for and many countries have been they've been planning on this for decades and and decades and i heard there was a, a paper an agreed upon plan back in the 1970s um to go off the current monetary monetary system and go on to something new Back then it was gold. Uh, it might still be gold, but it's also going to include Bitcoin, I believe. We'll find out. All right, moving on. This is getting a little long here. Um, Bannon removed from Trump's National Security Council. You notice you know, there's people being shifted. I think it's because decisions are being made and they don't want this person to be the, you know, the guy. They're going to blame Steve Bannon for this decision to be made. and They're going to blame Nunez for this decision to be made. Um, a new face means a new... A tactic on the on the Democrat side to try to tear them down, and they got to start fresh again, like on the the, the Russian hacking thing. They got to start fresh on the on the newer on because they need to step down. There's a new guy they got to attack and beat up. So it's going to be hard for them. <laughs> and you know they're they're too busy right now claiming we got to go to war. But in the final one here, snowflakes demand university presidents resign after refusal to support safe spaces. I watched the video on that yesterday, and I'm I, it, I'm just appalled at these people who have been empowered by Obama to say I have a right to my safe space, and these are they call them microaggressions, bad things. Someone said a bad word at me, and these are all in the colleges where none of them pay for their college. They practically all have government grants. I didn't say I wouldn't say none of them pay. You know, if you're wealthy, you can't get the kind of money. That's why prices of, of colleges have gone through the roof. The government pays for it all, um, and the people who have money aren't allowed to get uh, you know the loans for college. And I'm going through this right now, and you you're basically screwed. So you get people who feel entitled, uh, and Obama was the king of you know making people people feel entitled. You're entitled to free health care. You're entitled to free cell phone. And it's the taking back of that entitlement that is the hard part. You can't take anything away from people. Once they get it, they think they deserve it. Um, and these snowflakes, the snowflake is so perfect. It's such a perfect description of these people in, in universities. Um, but yeah, the, the president said, we're, we're going to allow people to, to say what they want. The world's a, a, a tough place and we're incubating people <laughs> who are not, going to be able to deal in the real world and you can see it in berkeley right now they're turning militant and that's and that's what happened they get so angry and so fed up that they're not getting their free stuff anymore they're turning militant and they're they're literally the most aggressive people out there a lot more aggressive than the the diehard republicans who are trump supporters um pretty soon the guns will come out in america and there's no doubt in my mind it's going to happen and you can't get around it the good thing is that everybody has guns in America, or you should. You should get a gun. I was against guns for a long time, but if everybody else has them, you better get one. <laughs> and when everybody has a gun, it's like everybody having a nuclear bomb. Uh, everybody's afraid to shoot one off because they know they can get shot in the next moment. Um, so when people bring guns to rallies and things like that, everybody will start bringing guns to rally. And as soon as one side starts shooting, the other side will start shooting, and the problem will be solved one way or the other. Um, it, I know it's a, a very kind of harsh way to look at it and not the kind of world we want to live in, but it, it's, the, the left is pushing it that way. And I, I've seen these protests in Berkeley. Um, I've seen uh, the, the Trump supporters try to go into Berkeley and you know, have a little... Uh, I, obviously, they're doing it just to, to get a rise because Berkeley is probably the most liberal leftist safe... If, if there's a safe, safe space city it's berkeley california <laughs> uh, 
which is like five miles right over there, right over there. Um, anyway, this is Big Swear. Don't forget to subscribe to these videos. And if you're interested in joining the private road, you get $30 in hard copy Bitcoin mailed to your front door, which those who took advantage of it when the Bitcoin was down 200 bucks, obviously you're doing really well. And you get one of these while supplies last. A horn of Z's mug. And on the back it says Road to Ruta. This is Big Swear. I'll talk to you tomorrow.